Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black and welcome to my speedrun of Mole Moose Quest Paradox RPG, chapters 1 and 2. I'll try and keep a running commentary, but my primary my primary goal is to do this quickly, so hope you don't mind if I shut up from time to time when I'm concentrating. Some of you may recall my speedrun for part one alone, and this will largely be the same. Not quite, but largely. At least the beginning part. Oh man, the encounter rate! I'm so used to not having encounters unless I want them. And then I get all I want. This is crazy. Now no encounters. Isn't that nice? There was a minor change up on the mountain where I grabbed an item to make the final fight the boss fight a little faster. Now pretty soon I'll be skipping an entire minor quest string. I've determined that taking Elias is faster than Alice. Not through testing, just uh, analysis, let's say. Sonia, join my party. There's a good girl. Nero, leave me alone. Bad boy. No biscuit. Unlike my first speed run, I'm going to be looting this place. I'm actually going to be spending a considerable bit of money in this run, and I'll explain it as I go, I suppose, but suffice to say, early in the game I do need to grab some things to make money. When exactly we do this camp these camping scenes is a bit unknown to me. There's a a certain skip uh, skip glitch you can use on the map by going into the pocket castle between squares. I won't be using that glitch because I want to do a glitchless run, but it exists. You know, in case anybody's curious. All right, tracking down Amira. Talk to that guy, that girl, this guy here. Get a free harpy feather out of that. I need my harpy feathers. Talk to that guy. Now we buy our harpy feathers. I'll need about 60, which means I need to sell a bunch of crap. That isn't enough, is it? Fortunately, I picked up that crap and Eliasville, so I can buy about as many as I need. 
That was surprisingly more than I expected. Finally talked to this guy, and the next stage of the quest is ready. Where you have to talk to... The priest here. I'm changing some of my characters to players. Because skipping random encounters is going to be really useful for making this run fast. So, a random encounter or two here. I've actually I gotten... That's good. Free encounter half. Ragura. Thank you. That should probably fix my random encounters for the rest of the game, honestly. I'm actually going to pay attention to what I'm doing in this battle. Unlike every other battle in the game. Because I want to make sure that all my characters survive. Because if all my characters survive, once I fight Poochie here, Right, I fought Pucci, everybody survived, so everybody got their level 2 in Flirt, so I can move on to encounter half everybody. I'll put uh, Ragura in my party, just because she's level 3 and all my characters are level 1 and 2. Ragura, you are so noisy. I regret this already. Okay. That's the first set of bosses down. Goba actually has a 30% failure rate on my runs just because I want everybody to survive and she kills someone about 30% of the time in my test runs. Die, abomination! Okay, yes, that only slowed me down, but it was the right thing to do. In my test runs, I never got Ragura recruited. Sometimes you get a freebie like that and it's kind of convenient. Uh, better sell some things to make sure I... I want to make sure I have enough guidelines to get out of dungeons in the game too. Now, advance the plot by talking to this bunny. It's the White Rabbit, after her. You can recruit... You can recruit Nuriko in that last screen. Well, actually a sub-screen of that last screen. But she doesn't actually improve my survival chances anywhere, so I'm throwing her at. I mean, I do regret it. Oh, right, Rabbit. Hello, goodbye. Whoops. Here we go. This is the part where we do explanation time. I'm glad they don't do this a lot in the game, in chapter... This is the last time, really. I think there's an optional one at the end of chapter one, or rather the beginning of chapter two. Anyway. I probably could have walked out of the Maul Castle and ended up right where I wanted to be. Luca, you're in the front of the party again. That's not where you go.
tucked it. Hmm? Oh god, I forgot. Well, that saves me time getting to Enrica next time. Cost me a couple Harper Killers though. I think I have about five to spare. So not a lot, but I can make a few mistakes without having to hit another shop before the end of the game. I think I'm, yeah, I'm here. Now, Promisteen, you can recruit in there, and I will recruit because I'm going to need her. Yes, 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 join my party. Don't need her for anything special right now, but she's going to carry my party in the next couple of boss battles. Now here's the roast room. Now I get to skip straight to Enrica. Where am I going? I can't walk a straight line to save my life. Okay, explanation, mal, 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 very good. Now I'm done with this continent. But this continent isn't done with me. The placement of those camp scenes in the first part is also hard to manage, so trying to use that glitch to skip them is not practical. Obviously don't open that first chest because it's a mimic. And also I'm super over under leveled and also it's a waste of time because I'm speedrunning. This is another luck gate. I can actually lose this. I can lose this battle in one turn, in which case it's game over and I start over. But if I survive one turn, Nether saves the day, and I can continue on like this. Now it's important that I loot most of this. Item I need. But most of this I'm grabbing in order to sell. I'll explain what. I'll explain why on the next continent. Speaking of the next continent, it's go time. Luca, get out of the front. I keep my strongest characters in the front of the party so they fight. And Luca now is basically at the very bottom rank. Although he's gained some interesting skills. Remember I said Promising would carry the party? Here she is, the only one that's alive already. You ever notice how Morrigan twists her hair around her horns? It's kind of an interesting detail, and there's actually a callback to it later in this game. Yeah, I'll do the quest, except I'm totally lying about doing the quest for you. Thanks for the orb, though. Stop in Ludite Village. Leave Ludite Village. I need to enter these places to get waypoints for my... Harpy Feathers. But I'm here to come to Amarta Carlo. 
I looted that treasure room so I could come here and sell things. That elixir I picked up in the... in the dungeon. Alright, that's enough money. I need four Berserk Masks, please. Now we'll go back to San Elia and do the things I'm supposed to be doing. But I like using Berserk Masks because I don't want to have to micromanage my characters in every single battle in the game. And you can watch as Promisine will again carry this next battle, but without me having to press a bunch of buttons. Which is good because sometimes the enemies will ask for mercy, which means accept the game over. And I don't want to mess that up. You press down an X, you press down an X in order to accept the game over. Oh. But you also press down an X in order to accept attack all. Which is what I'd be doing if I didn't have the Berserk Masks. So you can see how that could result in a bunch of game overs I don't need. Now I'm talking to Popeness here in order to get his quest. Ah, balls. Now that I've accepted his quest, I do it at Lydite Village. Start by talking to this jerk. And he shows up here. Bring him along. He's not in your party, but he'll be hanging about. So many times when you're in forests, the forests are like designed to make sure you run into these one square dead ends. But that forest is actually pretty easy to navigate. There are others I'll navigate which are a pain in the ass. I'm thinking the one at the top of the spider lair in particular. Now the boss at the end of this dungeon is really really tough and I lose most of the time unless I actually use his popeness correctly. I don't think I got too terribly hurt in uh, wherever the last one. Oh yeah, Cornelia. I don't think she hurt me too badly but Got a heal there just in case. Heal thing! You're cool. You don't want to fight us. Yeah, that never works. Oh, balls. Alright, everybody, I screwed that up, but I still won. You see, I was supposed to unequip my fourth character so that in that fight I wouldn't be berserked. And I could bring the Pope up to the front, and he he can pretty much trash Brunhilde on easy, very easy difficulty. Anyway. Next up is Sylph. I need to recruit Sylph. Sylph is also super easy with all these characters. This particular routing, I didn't test Sylph extensively. But when I did test it, with only... Who was it? Yeah, with only Promisine fighting against Sylph, I would die like 30%, 40% of the time. With Brunhilde and the Pope, Sylph was just no question going down easy. 
So I didn't test her extensively, like all the rest of the bosses. Yeah, I should mention that every boss I did ten times, in order to get a rough estimate of how often I died. There are four places where I have a 30% death rate, and a couple more with a 10% death rate. Which brings my total uh, death in this to be about 25%. My total success rate is about 25%. Here's another camping scene. Again, those take time off of my speed run. But it's alright. Trying to avoid them is a pain. I talked to that guy in order to open up this room here. Or convince Elias to unseal it. So we can talk to these documents. Warp back to the outside of the town. And that's why I got 60 freaking harpy feathers. Talk to her. Back to Sabasa. Now we go in the pyramid and we need to talk to the Sphinx. It really helps if you have the whole layout memorized. Now we can talk to the queen and get her uncursed. Luca, you shouldn't be in the front of the party. Come to think of it, I never put Sylph where she was supposed to go. Sylph also has the Encount Half ability, and we'll keep her in our party instead of Ragra in the long term. Yeah, everybody's set, I think. Let's fight. No, we're not all set. I forgot to put, give her a Berserk Mask. Okay, there's been a panic. Okay. Now, Luddite Village has been attacked. Let's save everybody. Yeah, except everybody's dead before we arrive. No big. You may have noticed I put Sarah below self, even though Sarah's higher level. The thing is, I'm going to be keeping Sylph in my party permanently. And when the recruits get to it a bit later, she could be first out of my party before Sara. It shouldn't really affect my battle capabilities too much. Here, we're berserked again. Which is how it should be. Oh no, all this death and destruction. Whatever, moving on. Um, okay, teleport outside of the town I'm in again. I need this for the waypoint again. If I have that waypoint, I can teleport ahead at the end of this labyrinth. Instead of having to teleport back and walk around. All right, hi, Nom. Okay, you put up a good fight. But we're done here. Now 
Now I warped to Saloon since I thoughtfully went and got that ahead of time. White Rabbit! This is the next one. Oh yeah, this is the end of part one. And as you might expect from the end of a RPG, even if just part one of a trilogy of RPGs, this is really long and really plot heavy. And I mean, really important if you don't already know. But well, I'm speedrunning, so a, I already know all of it, and B, if I listened to it, it would slow me down. I wasn't on top of telling you what changed from my original speedrun of part one. In the original speedrun, I didn't fight Brunhilde, I didn't recruit the Pope, and therefore I didn't recruit Sara. So those are the differences. After the purchases I made, which I never did in the first game. And that one item I picked up on the first mountain. Now radio's in our party, so I need to adjust our party again. Oh, hey, out on out. Boy, she looks like a final boss, doesn't she? Alright, that's the end of part one. But of course, there's got to be a twist ending. Dad! Hi, Dad! Bye, Dad! Okay. At that point, you can opt to get a rear explanation of everything that happened in this chapter in case you played the first part. And then when part two came out two years later, you might have forgotten some of the salient plot points. It was there for your convenience. Hi, Alice. Uh-oh. Oh, that shouldn't have happened. And I know what happened. Luca got turned into an angel after one of those cutscenes and lost his Encount Half ability. Don't you hate when that happens? At this point, we need to decide between joining the Marines or joining the Pirates. And obviously, uh, my criterion is about speed. So, I'm going to do what's fastest. You just walked through someone, Wanko. I haven't made a decision yet. This is just the game giving me my options. And while navigating the Sakana is a pain in the ass because it's all cramped, I'm actually going to pick to go with the pirates. They have fewer set battles. Actually, I think there's only one. No, first, bring our shell to the front. Time is almost here for that exception that I explained that I put Sara behind, 
puts Sato behind Sylph. Kororadana Chigaozo! Oh crap, that wasn't what I was supposed to do. Uh, Okay, time to go, but I need to rearrange my party, which I'm going to do by talking here. What I needed to do was dump Sara, add Boney. This is so Sylph stays in my party. Okay, because I screwed up, Boney's here instead of there. Now Sylph stays in my party forever. That's the only set fight of the pirate route. So the rest of this is just navigating in this cave. Encounter prevention is everything in a speedrun. I gotta tell ya. Now we talk a little and we get to keep the Sakana. So we can now use the boat. Except I hate using the boat because I move faster on land. Look at that! But I need the boat in order to advance the plot, so... For some reason the background music cut out on me. Now the reason I needed to recruit Sara is because I can't get into Grand Noah Castle without Sara. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Now in order to get their help I need to agree to be in the Coliseum go to compete in the Coliseum, I mean. And normally I would teleport out of the city in order to get to the guide guy who can teleport me straight to the Coliseum, but teleporting out was disabled for a bit. I'm sure for good reasons. Now managing this particular series of fights is... requires just a bit of finagling. I need to fill up my party with nobody in particular. can't switch anyone around, but, um, well, I'll explain as I go. Luca, you still shouldn't be in the fighting party, but I can switch you out here. Uh, who is it? Pony. There we go. Okay, round one down. And we get to watch Boney running around instead of Luca. Which isn't intended, but I think it's funny. These fights up to here are just... Just mini-bosses. They pose no threat. Now we're coming to the final round, the championship. And this requires some finagling because it's again a two-part battle. Part one, face roll. And then surprise, round two. If you played this ori the original, the Elder Trilogy, I should say, this has a lot of meaning to you, probably. But I don't, and it doesn't. But anyway, since all my armor temporary joins my party and can literally one hit Gran Beria, I'm gonna need that. Because without all my armor in my party, Gran Beria wins about 30%, 40% of the time. Not good for a speedrun. Though it means I need to re recruit some characters. Oh, yeah, these two. I hate you for ambushing me like this, both of you. Here's where I'm going. First things first, I toss Gnome out of my party prematurely, so I need to unequip her. 
which means throwing uh, Elias. You're out. Alright, everything's in order. These four are my players, they have my account half on, so... Now I just leave like I'm supposed to. Cutscene. This is... In part two, these campfire cutscenes aren't... weirdly placed. They're just at choke points every time. So they could easily be skipped with the pocket mile glitch. But again, I'm going glitchless. And that's going to kill my time in a certain later portion of the game. And I'll explain that as we come to it. Um, if I remember, which I might not, because sometimes I talk about other things. Luca, you're at the front of my party again. Now this Yamatai quest. Since I'm playing version version 2.0 instead of the later versions, I get to do a reduced form of this quest where I only have to complete this one shrine's quest. Oh yeah. Just this one shrine's quest. In later versions, you have to complete all four shrines, which is, you know, a waste of time. Hi, Neris. Bye, Neris. And we fight this girl anyway. Luca, you shouldn't be here. Um, somebody isn't equipped properly. Again, I'm gonna have to look that up and figure it out. All right. Right, since I was rearranging my party, I forgot about that part. Alright. This is the next directly plot relevant point. But not this battle in particular, just this location in general. Talk to Almelma just for fun. Because all my own is cool and all that. Now we're properly berserked, yes. Get wrecked. And put on some clothes. I mean the robes and hat are over the robes and pointy hat are overdone for witches and all, but I mean She's not particularly appealing naked. Oh yeah, I can just teleport out now. Now I'm cleared to go do the investigation in Esta. Oh look, it's in front of my party again. Whatever you're talking about, I'm not paying attention, so I'm going to answer, I don't know. I hate the vehicles in this game. I hate them so much. Look, it's Yom. Die, Zealot! Okay, she didn't actually die, she had mercy on us, but close enough for me. Now our final task is to recruit Undine. 
This is a special magical spring that just anyone can hop into without dying. I'm going to do with Udendine what I did with all my Alma. Because I need a recruiter into my party directly before another boss battle. And she's really useful in this second one. So I'm going to toss a radio early. Undine has a ton of health and resists several of Erebetier's attacks. Actually, I think all of Erebetier's attacks are pleasure attacks, which is weird. But anyway, she's got a ton of health, which means she won't die before Erebetier does. And now I can get Feyre out. My party again, because I kicked... Uh, was it Gnome? I kicked someone early. No, it wasn't Gnome. Radio! That's right. Gotta make sure that everybody's in proper order. Okay. I hate when I do that. I don't have a lot to spare. Uh, back to Grand Noir. I use the guides in these towns to avoid actually having to navigate the towns. It's not a whole lot faster, but it's easier. And now I'm cleared to move on with the war against... Um, those one guys? Grand Gold, that's right. And I meet someone here. Well, well, I remember you. She's going to join our party for five seconds, then leave our party. Then join our party for 20 seconds. Then leave our party again. And I mean, that's kind of what should be happening, but it's still kind of weird. I think I'm going to unequip her. Nom, nom, nom. That might save my butt in some of the later battles. If she has really high level gear, I didn't take a really good look at it. But she's out of our party. And now she does this cutscene. And joins our party again. Well, Alma, it's been fun. Bye now. Like I said, she spent like 25 seconds in the party. Roast chicken, please. That was the code phrase. In order to start this. In order to let the bartender know that we're spies. Here for spy business. So he would let us upstairs to do our spy business thing. Whoops. Sorry if you heard that in the background. I forgot to turn that off before I started. Now I am going to have to skip on back to the job change area. First, I 
I want to reclass Mephisto. And Undina has classes with actual health points. No. That'll work. Now, need to equip. Equip. I think one of those things is the thing I stole off all Mama. So maybe it'll help my survivability. You see, this next boss battle has about a 30% death rate again. So, well, before I do these, these adjustments like that, I think the death rate was about 40 or 50. So, I mean, while it isn't a perfect fix, it's better than nothing. And hell, depending on the quality of that item there, could really have been good for you. This is one of the longer cave systems in the game, and harder to remember. It's almost like they're just padding the length of the place. I think I'm almost done. Okay, that routing was bad. Gonna heal up, I walk through some poison stuff. So Golem here will still kill me about 30% of the time. Maybe less with all my illness gear, you know. Maybe all my this gear has some protection against uh, Zetchor. That's one of those status effects that can instantly kill me. Oh yeah, the warp glitch I told you about. It could have saved me going through that pass, all those caves, saved the boss fight. I wouldn't have to go in here, wouldn't have to see that campfire scene. So the Pocket Mile Castle Warp Glitch is really powerful, but again, I'm doing glitchless. Razaro, long time no see. Technically they joined my party, but I don't want them in my party. I mean, I'm not even going to bother on equipping them. That was a spur in the middle because Alma Elma is level 60 and the highest level character I'm ever going to get is level 53, so maybe she's equipped level appropriately. And I want to see here. Just take a moment. Oh, uh, no. Nope. Not the effect I was hoping for. Like the more I do this, the faster I get at it. Oh, and also remember that Azaro and Merlin joined my party. Now they're leaving my party again. Yeah, uh, thanks for slowing this guy down and all. Yawn. I'll always remember your sacrifice. Oh, sorry, I forgot it already. Must not have been important. Here's a fight that only occurs in the Ilias route. But there's a fight later on that I still consider more important than this waste of 15 seconds. Oh look, Kalmama again! Oh yeah, this scene. It's important because Samomo is coming. And this boss fight. 
Now obviously I'm going to die against alternate world Tamamo. But after this fight, there's the fight with this world Lilith. She has an attack that hits all my characters and causes instant death 75% of the time. Luca, you don't belong in front of the party. Anyway, if she uses that move, I'm probably done for. But sometimes I win. I looked at so many ways to mitigate my death there, but eventually I just found out there's no way. You can't prevent the sad effect, so you just gotta hope she doesn't do it. I mean, I could level up like six levels or so and kill her two turns faster so she has less chance to actually do it. But it's a speedrun, I don't have time for that. Um, this is a banquet. And that's the end of the banquet. I'm sure it's relevant for plot reasons. Now I can go through Gone Gold properly. Visiting King Gold here in his temporary castle. Because the last castle got blown up. And having talked to him, this guy will get out of my way. And I can move on with my life. I need to go to that volcano that I passed, but the bosses there will kick my butt. So, I'm going to recruit an extra character here. Uh, plus, this is going to be required for reasons they don't ex explain for quite a while. So, Captain Selene knows of a ghost ship from her ancestor, but it's actually her. She's pretending to be a descendant of herself. And she's a ghost, etc. Um, but the reason this is important cause, is because she got her hands on a very important orb. And we need to recover it from her ghost ship. So we need this key. It isn't the key that gets us into the treasure room with the orb. It's the key that gets us into the captain's quarters, which has the boss. And once we defeat the boss, we can get the key that goes into the treasure room. Well, probably I'm getting ahead of myself. Wait, Luca, you're in front of my party again, aren't you? Grr. Did I mention Mephisto carries me through like three battles in a row? It happens in part two a lot. Again, those guy rolls are no threat. And this is the key I need. Now you might wonder why I'm not going to the treasure room. It's because I can't actually unlock the treasure chest, treasure chest in question. But I've got a solution. And we will see it in just a moment. Now, Selena went to heaven because she accomplished her purpose. Except she didn't. Or she came back. Or something. And she'll join our party. Now, Selena is going to really help in the volcano battle. I could recruit these girls too. I could also re recruit Lazaro and Marlin. But I'm not going to. I've determined that Selene is sufficient. I mean, she's not perfect, but she's sufficient. Mm, nice. But for best effect, I'm going to equip some of her abilities. Some defense abilities here. But importantly, lockpick too. I mentioned that going to the treasure room was a waste of time because I couldn't actually open the treasure chest. Well, Selena has lockpick too, so I just equip that on her and I can run down to the treasure chest and unlock it.
This is the one! I've wasted a couple guidelines, so I'm gonna save one. Do that the hard way. But I haven't wasted a lot of... a lot of harpy feathers, so I'm gonna waste one there to get out of... Oops. Get out of town and head for the volcano. Not having encounters is so great. Okay, everything's set here. Salamander's a pushover. Salamander's a pushover, but... Just like Undine, someone shows up after the fight. Again, I die about 30% of the time there, which makes this a pretty good run already. Unlike Undine, Salamander doesn't join your battle for the fight afterwards, which would make the battle a lot e <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot easier again. Uh, anyway, let's put her at the top of my list again. Come on, get around that. Don't need to go to the Succubus Village, but I do want to visit this place for the Phoenix Harpy Feather. Harpy Feather Waypoint. I do that a lot, in case you hadn't noticed. This one isn't too terribly long. And we're done. Harpy Waypoint. Now with Salamander in the party, we can extinguish this fire. Hi, White Rabbit. Thanks for putting that shit in our way. Ah, Remina Castle. In its corrupted form. Yeah. I'd explain the plot, but there's a lot of plot to explain. Now we are... Oh yeah, we're in the past. Oh no, Lilith Lilim are attacking the town. What are we going to do? I know, the hero Heinrich will save us. So yeah, Luca pretends to be Heinrich. Cause it's funny. It's a good thing Heinrich didn't show up and ruin our fun. Oh, snap, it's Heinrich. I guess he'll be staying in town. I learned the weirdest thing about Heinrich just today. In, in Sonia's home back in Eliasville, she has a teddy bear. And if Heinrich is in your party and you examine the teddy bear, he says something interesting. Yeah, Queen Elf. Uh, no, this is Queen Fairy, sorry. Queen Fairy is not a threat. Now, trying to keep, keep this series of events straight has confused me in the past, so I actually have notes on where to go for the next six or eight warps. Mermaid General. Most bosses, I tested ten times to see what happens. Did you hear that reflect sound during the battle? I put a reflect ability on, on Selene. It doesn't activate very often, but it makes a reflect sound. Anyway, Mermaid General isn't important. She's not even a mini-boss. 
like L here. All right, we did that. They kick us out of town to spruce things up again, and it's on to the next. Sara, no, wait. Well, obviously that was going to happen. Two more mid bosses. Oh no, Sarah's surrounded by vampires. Well, that was short. She's going to come back in my party because she leveled up a bunch by turning into a Sapcubus. Nevertheless, she isn't berserked, and she's not necessary for this fight, so she doesn't get to fight right now. Next, Grand Gold. The Spider Army. This is actually a series of regular fights. Not actually boss fights, but regular fights. But I did keep track of it to make sure I don't die too often, and I tested it ten times, and I died once on these two. I think it was just a fluke, honestly. Like some rarely hitting death attacks or something. Anyway, that's the Spider Princess. Oh, wait. The king is on the scene! So Spider Princess is going to fight this guy. And we're going to fight another general. Atarak and Atarak. Still, never died to her. She is just the weirdest design for her character, though. All right, King Grand Gold joins our battle, and we've saved all the countries. And these people talk at us for a while. Yeah, that's what happens next. Luca. Okay. Now I'm going to Esta. So these four monster girl armies attack the good guys, attack the humans, let's just say that, of these four kingdoms, so we get to go have revenge on them. Hi, El. I love you, you're beautiful and all that. I'd love to hear your backstory, but uh, speedrun, gotta go. There are so many labyrinths I have to find my way through. And as I keep attempting this speedrun, I get better at it. But I still hit so many dead ends. Oh, and the worst one is yet to come. It's ridiculous. L, welcome to this party. You may have noticed that I put Gra King Grand Gold after... After Sara, even though I recruited him later. That's just because his level is lower. Notes, gold part. Oh god. Sailing. You know I decrypted the whole game and coded my own little script into it so that I could dash and actually go fast when I'm in vehicles. 
But as a legit speed run, I can't exactly use that to get an unfair advantage over guys who, well, don't do that. Ah, uh, yes, the vampire place. First, go to Camila's bedroom, which is through the kitchen and the prison, as you do. Seriously, I just can't get over how ridiculous the layout of this dungeon, this uh, castle is. I mean, they're vampires, so I could uh, kind of see them wanting to go through a prison in order to get to where they rest, but why the kitchen? For that matter, why do they even have a kitchen? Do they need to cook their food? They drink blood. Worst character in the game. I hate her so bad. I'll never forgive you for giving Vanilla a crappy name. And that's the last time I'll ever see you. Bye. Okay, I'm just checking to make sure I didn't toss too many people out of my party at once. That can mess things up. Notes indicate Sabasa next. You might think that it's weird for me to be fighting the elves offshore of Sabasa when the elves actually attack, attack Grand Noah, which is across the world from here. But the elves are actually based out of uh, this island off of Yamatai, which is close to Grand Noah. The elf queen hangs out here with the fairy queen for reasons I... Oh, actually, I don't know. I mean, they're kindred spirits and all, I suppose, but that doesn't explain why they did to have both queens here on this island in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, if you consider the elves are coming from outside of Yamatai, the configuration of the attacks on the capitals makes sense. But if you're just going on how you have to fight these girls, it doesn't. Although the vampires do actually have to travel the entire globe for no good reason. That one is definitely weird. Let's just say vampires can fly or something. Next up, Saloon. Oh god. That means more sailing. Kill me. I got through that segment of the forest without getting stuck in a dead end once. That's pretty good for me. Hmm. That took a while, but they didn't kill anyone, so I guess I'm good. And now, navigating the spider lair. This is full of tricky little twists and turns, tiny little gaps you have to fit your characters in while sprinting the entire time. Yeah, optimize this for a speedrun. I mean, there are other optimizations I could do to my route. I don't even know that the Berserk Masks actually help my time, technically speaking. But trying to pull this off perfectly would be just ridiculous. And it's so long, too. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm just a few screens from the end now. Red herring, not actually important. That hole down below, also not important. Here we are. Alright, Spider Princess. Not actually a threat. Sounded an awful like like somebody died there. And when you get used to it, there's this momentary lull in the damage effects. But it recovered me after the battle, so I don't know who died. Ah, uh, anyway. On to the next one. Now I need to go collect my damn rewards. And then I can move on with the plot. Even though I don't need the rewards and I won't use the rewards. I mean, is it even a goodie if it doesn't do you any good? There's a philosophical question for you. That guy moves? Alright, Sarah, give us our thing and we'll be going. Grand Noah. Somebody's always getting in my way in that hallway. Grand Gold. No warping here. Temporary castle. Temporary castle, my ass. Give me a break. Now the plot can continue. It's time to head for the North Continent Helgond. Except I can't get there without summoning a magic bird and I need four orbs to do it and I have two. So the next step. More warping around. Fortunately, this scorpion girl will teleport me to Sphinx Prop. Lickety split this time. Now, Elf. I am. Fairy Island. Now, if I talk to the Elf Queen, she'll tell me the Elf Princess has it, and I can talk to her in Yamatai. If I've solved that snake shrine problem in version 2.00. From 2.02 onward, you gotta do all four quests. I mean, I know I explained that again, but I know I explained that already, so I'm explaining it again, but I mean, I gotta keep talking because. Um, Actually, sometimes, at the beginning of the run, I said I would not talk sometimes, just because I'm concentrating, but kind of at this point, I don't need to concentrate so much. I've done this a lot. This has been a pretty lucky run. I've got about an 80% chance to get to the end now. There are two 10% chances of me dying. Again, based on you know, 10% uh, based on 10 trials. I'm getting those percentages, so the percentages may not be accurate. I should have used the guide guy to do this. Okay, I need a boat. No, you can't have a boat. Okay, what if I recruit a legendary hero? Heinrich, you're in our party now. Miss Mayor, I brought the magic word. Thank you. Let's go. Boats are slow. Okay, so far this is the worst cave I've ever been through. 
Uh, there's a dead end. Okay, that might not have been the shortest route. I think it actually kind of goes around. If it needs to, no. Here. I don't know why this one gives me so much trouble since I've been through it about as often as the others, but oh man. That's Remina, and I could visit it, but I won't. All right, past Maul Castle. I could fight them all, except she'd kick my ass up, down, and sideways. So I'm just gonna loot the top floor of this one tower. Oh no, Luca, what are you doing in front? And for that matter, I didn't put Heinrich in the front properly. Now these girls have never killed me, actually. But they have killed characters in my party before, so I'm worried. Okay, worry unfounded. Let's do this properly. Oh yeah, I'm gonna equip Heinrich with some abilities. Um, extra HP, extra attack, extra spell points. Extra defense, definitely. Revive? Uh, no, that's not it, is it? Oh yeah, regenerate SP. Now what I needed was that. Heinrich's going to carry a very difficult battle for me a little later. Now I'm going to gold dial. But he's going to barely carry me. So I need him at the top of his game. After all, there's still a 10% chance that he'll lose. I love the layout of this dungeon. I mean, it's a little windy and everything, but the corridors, they are two and three tiles wide all the time. I don't have to finicky, I don't have to try and Sprint my way through these finical tiny little corridors with all these dead ends and shit. For sadness, I kicked your butt, but the architecture of your place is awesome, I'll give you that. Oh, I'm low on guidelines. I wonder how many more I need. Uh, no time to look at it now. That's everything. Everything here, anyway. Everything as far as the orbs go. Time to summon a bird and fly to the next continent. Except no, that's how, not how it's going to work. Remember I visited the noblewoman's village for just a moment? It's so I could get my boat to the most convenient place. Forgetting to. The very last. Continent. And thankfully. This is. The very last goddamn fucking boat ride. Okay. Now I told you Heinrich's gonna carry this fight. And still I'll only survive 90% of the time. I think it's... Well, I didn't analyze it too closely. I just assumed they've got instant death attacks. But Heinrich's got revive on. Which brings him back to life after one death in a battle. And I presume that's what brings my survivability up. This is approximately halfway done. Yes, this screen starts you in front of a staircase that's a red herring. 
your exit here. Well, it's not a red herring per se, because lots of people would want to go down that staircase and grab those uh, chests that's there. But it's a red herring for me because I'm trying to get out of here. And I'm out of here. Explanation, go to the town. I need to go to Ranael, please. Ranael, I need to talk about this one topic. Thanks. Bye. This, uh, snow shrine. That's right. If I didn't talk to Rana all about that one topic, nothing would happen here. Although, for story reasons, it should still happen, I think. But anyway, sometimes the plot just needs you to do things that seem ir in unintuitive. I mean, that's plot in a nutshell. And this right here is the reason I picked Elias. I don't have to fight her as a boss with an underleveled party, and I recruit her as an ally. She needs to wear clothes, though. Clothes are good. I mean, even for angels. Most of them actually... Oh yeah, I need to unequip the mask from L. That's the last guideline I need to use. And this is the last harpy feather I need to use. So things went well. I never had to make another shop trip after Elias Burke. Elias Burke for harpy feathers, Pornoff for guidelines, and Monte Carlo for my berserk masks. There's an upgraded berserk mask, the mask that you can get in the world tree if you decide to go fight the Aldraune. But I opt not not to. I could sprint through this dungeon so fast if I didn't have to talk to the White Rabbit six times. Uh, no, that's twice. And would do it... Uh, hmm. Is it actually six times? Okay, this is three. And then she moves to the next screen. And on the next screen we talk to her once. So yeah, four times before the final keen scene. And of course these mini scenes where she's walking along showing you where to go. I found an interesting bug on that last screen. If you happen to try and exit the screen too early. White Rabbit, no! You were a good person. Basically. For certain definitions of good and certain fitting definitions of person. Okay. Move Luca out of fighting position. That guy is going to die in 5 minutes and 43 seconds. Or. In 13 seconds, if you're at speed run. Oh, here it is. He's dead. All right, the final boss is a two-part boss. Part one is coming up. It's not a threat. Part two. Still killed me about 10% of the time. But this has been a pretty good run. I'm surprised I got this far. Like I said, I don't have a 25% chance of doing the whole thing. Oh, I told you there would be a callback to Morgan's hair horn style. Here it is. Sonia draws power from Morgan and gets the hair wrap around her horns thing going on.
Sonia. We don't need to fight. You're good. Right? Yep. That's a win. So, part two has been out for, what, two, three years now? I know I'm only now doing a speedrun. It took me, like, a couple days to do all the routing, and here I am. But, you may know that recently, Total Total Resistance released a trailer for the next part. So, possibly the next part's coming out soon? That'd be nice. Anyway, in case anyone was wondering, yes, I'm still alive. Yes, I'm still willing to do this stuff. And as proof or evidence, or maybe just because I want to show my face and get the ego from uh, asserting my own relevance, this is a speedrun. And I did it in... Hmm. Okay, after the credits, there'll be a few talking, and then I'll stop time do a save, and that save will tell me how long I spent getting this speed run done. So credits, bit of talking, save. Okay, there's a bug. And that took one hour, 23 minutes. And that concludes my speed run. Thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you when part three comes out. Bye now.